three models in the range. This is the island bed model. There's also a single bed version and a bunk bed model for families. 6.61 meters long and only 2.19 meters wide. Living area door fly screen that I showed you, LED daytime running lights, Pioneer DAB multimedia system with 6.2 inch screen with inbuilt reversing camera and bed can be raised at the press of a button. Of course, you've got two double beds, island bed at the back, drop down bed over the cab. You've got a large drawer for extra clothes storage under the foot of the bed. You've got these pleated curtains, very easy to deploy. Perhaps it should flash and say bar and grill or something. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm enjoying some glorious weather at Wokingham. As you can see, I'm at another motorhome dealership. No, it doesn't look much like it, does it? But really, I am, because Wokingham Motorhomes is buried in the countryside. And look what I've unearthed buried in the countryside. This new Itinio, one of the first examples in the UK of the new Nomad range. Now, if you don't know Itinio, it's part of the Rapido group. And these vans actually come down the same production line in Mayenne in northern France as their Rapido brethren. There's even a little badge on the side that says buy Rapido in case you'd forgotten or you wanted a bit of reassurance. Now, the Itinio name has been around for quite a long time now, but this Nomad is a brand new series for 2022. Three models in the range. This is the island bed model. There's also a single bed version and a bunk bed model for families. But the key thing is they're smaller. 6.61 meters long and only 2.19 meters wide. So good bit narrower than the typical A-class, good bit shorter than a typical A-class. Not only that, but a good bit cheaper than a typical A-class. This one starts at 63,600 pounds. And no, you don't have to add a list of expensive extras as long as your arm, your leg, and halfway to Timbuktu. No, there's just a few choice options. You will want the life pack and a few other bits. This one comes to 68 grand in round figures. It's a 67,994, I think it is. But 68 grand as you see it here. What else is new? Well, you can't tell from looking at it here unless you look very, very closely at the centres of the alloy wheels, which are an option. But the centres of the alloy wheels have a Peugeot Lion on them. So this is based on a Peugeot Boxer. 140 bhp engine as standard. And if you want an automatic gearbox, you just switch to the equivalent Fiat Ducato. But being on a Peugeot helps to keep that price down. Now these Itinio A-classes have always had a very distinctive look about them and this new Nomad is no different. Well, I say it's no different, it still looks very different, doesn't it? But it carries on that tradition of quite a bold, distinctive visage for a motorhome. Yes, it's quite boxy, but also, well, I think it's quite attractive. You've got these row of LED running lights here, a quartet of lights doing fog lamps, indicators and all the rest of it down there, and the Itinio motif in the middle of the grill. Very black and white finish, very automotive. I think it looks very smart. And then when you want to access the bonnet, of course, like most European A-classes, habitation door is on the off side, cab door is on the near side, but you do get the two doors. Just inside the passenger cab door is the usual Fiat bonnet release, just low down under the dashboard. And then a simple yellow catch that's easy to see to lift up the bonnet. Now, under there, of course, it's the usual rather A-class letterbox style access to all your reservoirs and so on. And anything that you need to top up, even your windscreen water, reservoir is going to need a funnel but that is not unusual with an A-class. You have got a stay to hold the bonnet up at least. 
So let's have a look at some of the details that you get on this CM660. As I said, those 16 inch alloy wheels are an option. They're 740 pounds and the front fog lights, they're 220. Let's say habitation door is on the off side, cab door on the near side, but they're both linked to the central locking. German manufacturers, please take note. Diesel and AdBlue fillers where you'd expect. Mains hook up. Now your fresh water is inboard, filler here. 110 litres, so decent size. Wastewater tank is underslung and that's 90 litres. As an option, you can have that heated. That's a 270 pound option. Then you've got your cassette toilet servicing, of course. And then finally, towards the back, the first of your garage doors. So the garage, 880 millimetres tall and up to 1.12 metres wide here. Now that reduces a little bit in this corner because that's where your gas locker is. And in there, you've actually got room for two 13 kilo cylinders. So a bit of one-upmanship on the gas capacity. You've got your fixed tie-downs to secure your bikes or whatever. Blown air heating outlet. External shower point, although that is cold water only and it is an optional extra. Not optional extras though are the 230 volt socket and the light switch. Just one light at the end. Now the cold water shower is a £140 option, but one thing that is much more important than that is standard, and that is that the bed can be raised at the press of a button. Now, as you can see, it's not rapid, but it's a hell of a lot better than a winder handle. And I experienced one of those recently in a 90 grand motorhome. This is a 68 grand motorhome, or 63 grand motorhome in standard form, and you get an electric up and down bed. You've got over a metre of headroom, so I think it's 1.05 metres actually, and you can get bikes in here now. Of course, you will need to lower the bed down when you get to the campsite to actually sleep in there, but it does make your garage a lot more usable when you're traveling. And as I say, all you have to do is press the button. You can only carry up to 150 kilos in here, but that's plenty for bikes and so on. And it's all a nice, smooth glass fiber, nice hard wearing finish. So that should all just wipe out if you put muddy mountain bikes in here. There's no drain hole, but as I say, wipe clean under this protective mat. Now, I've just done a few sums, and I reckon you've still got well over 550 kilos of payload, even with the options on this vehicle, and remember, at three and a half tonnes. One thing you don't get, though, is a spare wheel. You just get this sort of get-you-home kit, so you might want to think about fitting a spare wheel into the garage area. Underneath the garage is your waste drain, nice and simple. That shouldn't be a faff when it comes to emptying down. And despite the price point, you've got these nice framed windows as well. Awning light above, nice big wide electric step that automatically retracts. And as I said, the habitation door is linked to the central locking. Not only that, but it's got a fly screen on it as well. And oh, look at that. It attaches magnetically. I rather like that. And then up front you've got the bus style mirrors, albeit only single lens ones, unlike on a Rapido where you get the sort of blind spot small lens below. But then there's another feature here that I really like. Easy access to your leisure batteries and on this van you've actually got two. Now that is another option and I need my crib sheet because the second leisure battery is a £330 option. But what a great feature to have two leisure batteries, easily accessible and you've even got a little shelf for maybe your mains lead and levelling wedges and a few bits and bobs in there as well. Now before I move on from the exterior I just wanted to show you the back of this van because well, OK, it's a bit flat and plain, but doesn't it look at the same time bold with these 
sort of hockey stick lights. I rather like it. It just shows that Itinio isn't afraid of doing things a little bit differently. Now, the other thing I should mention is because we've been talking about optional extras, the pack life, because that's the one thing that you won't want to be without, and you probably can't get one without it anyway. The cost is £2,244, and I'm afraid I need my crib sheet, but you get ESC with anti-slip regulation, that's ASR for short, rollover mitigation, ROM, hill holder, crosswind assist, towing stability control, and automatic post-collision braking. No, no, that's not all. You get the electric heated mirrors, electric entry step, the living area door with two-point locking, fixed window and built-in bin. I don't think it has got a built-in bin. It's got a magazine holder, but perhaps that's what they mean. Living area door fly screen that I showed you, LED daytime running lights, Pioneer DAB multimedia system with 6.2 inch screen, with inbuilt reversing camera and night vision, and finally, a second remote control for your central locking. All that, £2,244. Now, I think a big part of this motorhome will be driving it, so let's do that next. Now, the very first thing you notice before you even pull away is that it's an advantage to have small hands because there's not a lot of room between the handbrake and the cupboard next to it, and you do have to be careful not to scrape your knuckles as you take the handbrake off. But that said, the rest of the environment is good, isn't it? And you, you've got the leather steering wheel, you've got the Pioneer DAB radio, you've got the bus style mirrors, albeit without the, the blind spot lenses, and forward visibility is excellent. Now, I've just been out on the motorway and 140 bhp engine in this which is the standard spec is adequate um yeah the 165 bhp peugeot engine might be tempting but the 140 is perfectly adequate you don't need any more but what's more impressive is the suppression of engine noise some a classes you do find that you get a lot more engine noise than in a standard Fiat or Peugeot cab. In here, the engine noise is really well suppressed. It's, it's nice and refined on the road. Yes, there's some conversion noise. I have to expect that with the hard ride of a Fiat or Peugeot, I'm afraid. Um, but it's not, it's not bad. It's better than some more expensive vans that I've driven recently. Manual gearbox is fine and any, for anybody that doesn't know this Peugeot cab is very 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 similar to the Fiat and they come down the same production line in Italy yes you don't get the the new style instrumentation that you get on the Fiat but does that really matter no and if you want an automatic then of course the Itinio switches on to the the Fiat cab anyway um, your Pioneer display does the reversing camera as well. One other thing to consider always with an A-Class, of course, is the windscreen wipers. And here, well, yeah, they do leave a large blind spot on the right-hand side, um, but that, I'm afraid, is common to a lot of A-Class motorhomes. Not in the slightest bit unusual. Um, there are one or two that have triple wipers, but that's, I'm afraid, not the norm. Cab seats, cab seats are excellent. Um, they've got the integral seat belt, so they're not, the seat belts aren't coming from right over on the wall, they are part, part of the seat. And the other thing I really like about these seats is they've got tilt adjustment on the squab too, so easy to get plenty of support under your knees for a good comfortable driving position for a long journey. And the other thing you do notice, really, really do notice on this van, is that it doesn't feel big. It doesn't feel like a lot of A-classes where you feel like you're driving a great big bus. This feels like a nice compact vehicle when you're on the road. And that is really what this Itinio is all about.
So this Itinio feels lovely and compact on the road. It really does make a difference. But does that make too much of a difference when it comes to living on site? Let's take a look at that now. Well, there's certainly no feeling of shortage of space, is there? Look at the glazed area around the cab with these big side windows and the huge windscreen. Well, that's typical A-Class, of course, but it does make a big difference to the feeling of space up front here. And that's not all, because you've got the big uh, wind-up roof light, proper wind-up one, not the cheap push-up type that you see on some vans, you've got a deep window in the habitation door as well. It's, it's a very light area, this. And, of course, Rapido was the originator of the folding half table. So, unfold it when there's four of you dining, and it's big enough for that. But most of the time, if there's only two of you, well, it's a great size for coffee, snacks, and it'd be adequate for two persons full meals. After dinner, well, you can spin this seat round, right the way round, and get your feet up on the sofa, which is ideal because the TV bracket is on the wall over there. A great little lounge for two, perhaps a little bit more challenging if there are four of you, but it should serve at least for occasional family use. The only downside, perhaps, is that this seat doesn't go back any further towards the dashboard. There's a bit of space there that could have been utilised. Now, as far as artificial lighting is concerned, well, there's plenty of that too. Strip lights around the drop-down cab bed, which incidentally doesn't rattle or move about at all while you're driving. Spotlights in the ceiling and in the underside of these top cupboards. You know, a couple of USB ports up there as well. And there's a 12 volt, 12 volt socket inside the cupboard, which can feed your TV. This upholstery is an option, there's three to choose from, and this one's called Magnetic. It's a £320 extra if you want it, and I rather like it. It's certainly got quite a, a youthful vibe with this yellow Go Faster stripe on it. It's typical of modern motorhomes with this sort of fake leather, but this one is certainly one of the more appealing designs I've seen recently with this diagonal stitching. What else to tell you? Well, it does feel very modern, doesn't it? I'm not sure about these oaten shelves at the bottom because the little lip isn't going to really hold anything there once you're travelling, but they do look nice. You've got net curtain on the window as well. Yeah, a nice modern looking motorhome. And this is a true four berth too. Of course, you've got two double beds, island bed at the back, drop down bed over the cab and four travel seats because you've got twin three-point seat belts on this bench. Now for travel you just simply remove this cushion and the wooden panel that it sits on and then you've got plenty of room for two passengers back here. The floor's raised in this section too so nobody's got dangly feet it's all at one level, although you just then step down into the kitchen area. Under this false floor, you've got all your electrics under a panel that's easily removed to show your fuses and charger and that sort of thing, all in one easy to find place. So if the lounge belies the fact that this is only just over six and a half metres long, well, what about the kitchen? Well, at first glance, yes, it does look quite compact and surface area seems to be taken up mainly by the glass lid for the sink and for the three burner hob. But that said, well, you're never going to complain about the size of the fridge. That's 142 litres and it's got automatic energy selection and a bottle drawer at the bottom. You're not going to complain about the fact you haven't got an oven either, because you have here. It's only a small 18-litre um, oven, but you have got an oven. What you haven't got is a grill. That is purely an oven. You're certainly not going to complain about storage. You've got a large top locker, and, OK, the fiddle rail on the, on the shelf isn't uh, going to keep a lot of stuff in, in situ, but should be enough probably for your plates and bowls.
Again, this shelf, well, useful perhaps on site, but you need to stow everything safely away once you start travelling. But one thing that you won't have to consider when you're travelling is your drawers flying open because in Rapido fashion there's a twist knob that just locks them all solidly closed. And when you're on site you've got big cutlery drawer there, drawer for your plates and bowls there, and even another one for your pots and pans. And then little cupboard underneath the oven open that and we'll solve the worktop issue. Okay I think that says it only takes yeah five kilos but I wasn't going to sit on it anyway so yeah a bit of serving space there and of course the table is close by anyway. You've got a bit of style with the backlit Itinio branding and a little shelf for your oddments too. So, yeah, apart from the lack of a grill, not much to fault in the kitchen either. Before we move on to the washroom, which is opposite on the near side, I should perhaps say too that this doesn't feel like a narrow corridor, as you might expect with a slightly slimmer bodied motorhome. Everywhere feels quite nice and light and spacious. Now perhaps part of that is the use of lighter colours for the wood and this white gloss here but also you know it's it's not a narrow van it, it just has a nice feel to it. I'm slightly bemused by the lack of wine racks anywhere I mean this is supposed to be a French motorhome but I have to say this blue signage here does remind me of those neon signs you see sometimes outside French state bar type restaurants. Perhaps it should flash and say bar and grill or something. Hey, who knows? Before we step inside the washroom, it's worth noting that there's a long mirror so you can check your outfit before you go out. Inside the washroom, well, there's plenty of space, but we'll come on to that in a second because it's worth noting that you can also spin a little flap around like so. It just gives you that extra width to make sure the toilet door closes off the bedroom area. And if you want a bit of privacy when you come out of the shower, well, there's a curtain for that. So now you've got a really good, ge generous changing area. Although, of course, remember that your wardrobes are back in the bedroom. But, as I say, it does give you a bit more versatility to the back end of the motorhome. Now there's certainly no shortage of leg or shoulder room when you're sitting on this swivel cassette toilet. And not only that, it's not one that's mounted up high so you don't need legs like a giraffe to sit comfortably. Better still, well, you've got this nice wash base from the little bit of worktop alongside and this very posh sort of waterfall style tap. I really, really like that. I mean, that's the sort of thing you'd normally find in a 100 grand motorhome, not a 63 grand motorhome. And it all feels very nicely finished. Slightly disappointed that when you've got this good storage here that they haven't fitted the little elastic straps that hold everything in place that you get in most Rapidos, but hey, I suppose they had to save a few pennies somewhere with it being an Itinio. And then when it comes to showering, we we'll undo a bolt at the top, swing the wall with the basin on it around to one side, and then your shower cubicle is simply completed with these bifold doors. Now, good sized space in there, plenty of room for showering, and you don't use your tap the tap doesn't double up as a shower hose as it does in some vans. You've got separate shower head and it all looks great, doesn't it? Decent headroom as well, roof vent. The only downside is there is just one outlet in the shower tray. And with the shape of the tray, I think you might have a little bit of pooling of water after a shower. Oh, 
You're back again already, are you? Right. Well, I have to say, I slept very well. This Bultex mattress is certainly very, very comfortable. And it's 1.88 metres long by 1.4 metres wide. So, decent size too. Let's throw some light on the matter. Oh, that's better. You've got these big, really generous bedside tables because the wardrobes are suspended above. His and hers wardrobes, of course, typical island bed design. Small roof light above, opening windows on either side. And about this shelf, because well, it does rather hinder sitting up in bed. What a shame. Good top lockers for your clothes. But the main thing is, this is a very, very comfortable bed. And there's even decent foot space around, which I'm going to try now. It's time to get out and get dressed. You want to turn the camera off for that. Right, now that I'm up, I should point out too that headroom reduces slightly in the bedroom because you go up a step, firstly into the bedroom, and then you've got a step at either side of the bed. But headroom in the main living area is just over two metres, so you've still got decent headroom in the bedroom as well. In fact, even at the side here, it's just over 1.7 metres. Other things to note, where well, you've got a large drawer for extra clothes storage under the foot of the bed, and the heating to keep you nice and cosy at night, well, Itinio upgrades that for the UK, so you get the Truma Combi 6, and it's gas and electric. On a mild, or a mild spring night like last night, it was fine just leaving it on electric only, which is nice to know if you're staying on full facility campsites. Before we move on and show you the other bed, just reiterate the fact that there's decent room to get around the foot, even with a duvet on the bed. Remember that when you see it in the showroom, they always feel that bit more spacious because you haven't got a duvet overhanging the end of the bed. And then under the foot of the bed here, under this little trap door, you've got access to your water drains, fresh waste, and for the boiler as well. Now for nighttime privacy, you've got flat blinds on the main habitation windows. And then around the cab, rather than blinds, you've got these pleated curtains, which I have to say, although I suspect they're an economy measure because they're probably a lot cheaper than the usual blinds you get around the cab, they do feel a nice quality. And they're very, very easy to deploy. And when you get to the middle, the two sections just velcro together. Now they're probably not quite as good for winterisation as proper blinds but they certainly do the job for privacy. And then the beauty of an A-class of course is that you've always got, well almost always, got the cab bed. And to deploy the cab bed you simply need to tip the front seats forward and then it's just a buckle to undo and pull down the bed. Of course you need a ladder for access, but once again it's a Bultex mattress. Here you've got just a single light, 1.86 metres long this time by 1.4 metres wide, so almost the same size as the island bed at the back. It's just a shame there's no roof vent above, directly above the bed. You've got the the big roof light just to the just to the rear of the bed, but it would be nice for hot summer nights, particularly if you're off to the med, to have a roof light directly above. What you have got though is privacy from well, a little bit of privacy from whoever's sleeping at the back. So time for a final verdict on the Itinio CM660. And Short answer is, I really, really like it. Here's an A-Class without a silly price tag, under 70 grand, as you see it, with all the bits on it. Even by the time you've added a telly and an awning, it's still gonna be under 70 grand. Not only that, but on a three and a half ton chassis with a decent payload. 
it works for two, but it even works for four because you've got the drop down bed at the front and when that's down you've still got a little bit of seating area. The two beds are quite separate as well. You've got a good family orientated washroom, proper shower in there. Yeah, the kitchen isn't huge, but you have got an oven. Just a pity there's no grill. And on the road, it feels nice and stable. It's quiet and it doesn't feel like a big van because it's not that much longer than an extra long Fiat Ducato or Peugeot Boxer panel van. And just being that little bit slimmer also makes a big difference when you're on British country roads. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed filming it. If you have, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know more about camper vans and motorhomes, look at outandaboutlive.co.uk. Thanks for watching.